I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, it's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. In this video, we're going to talk about multiple videos and clan battles and how the Druid is, I believe, one of the most powerful, if not broken, uh, overpowered, whatever you want to call it, ships in the game for clan battles right now. And the way we have it built, we'll check the build at the end of the screen. We'll show you how we're just taking on massive amounts of cruisers and uh, just an awesome, awesome ship to be playing in clan battles. And I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a look at it. Hey, team is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. This is the map Shatter now, and we're going to get right to it. Uh, basically, the idea is uh, nothing too cosmic where we have the uh, simple split as we already is, but we're going to favor one side more heavy where we actually have a uh, majority of the cruisers will actually poop wrong arrow. We're going to have the majority of the cruisers push down through the gap at, from Bravo to Charlie. Obviously, the destroyer will push through Bravo and go wide and spot for the team so that we can get a couple flanks there we're also going to have the battleship just push right through the center area and engage anything that way so we have basically two fields of flanking fire into charlie and we're going to basically overwhelm we're going to do a bravo charlie push meanwhile we have the one destroyer pushing through the center and using concealment to park itself right there to kind of contest the cap and kind of throw off the enemy while we have one cruiser in support just in case so that's kind of the basic idea of how this plan works uh, we're going to take a look at actually how it plays out because you don't know what the enemy team is going to do most likely the battleship will go through either alpha and they try to contest uh, alpha from the southern side charlie is a given cap so we're really just overwhelm charlie because we know that they're majority of the time i'm going to just have three ships if we overwhelm them with five when usually we'll have a an advantage there so let's take a look at the video and see how it goes all right team here we are on the map shatter in the druid full gunboat build and we are out on the flanks just like we briefed and talked about and we seem like we have a saint martin san martin here a very deadly cruiser with radar and we don't want one to pick a fight with him but we are going to put some damage on him at least scratch the paint to do something just to get him pissed off and uh, we're going to try to draw him out into enemy fire. Now, the cool thing about the Druid is it really is annoying. I I'll just be honest with you right there. If I had to play against it, I would find this annoying as well. Uh, and that's why you cannot let a Druid flank you, and you cannot let a Druid survive the long battle because it is literally a, uh, a killer by a thousand paper cuts. It literally will come and haunt you if you don't eliminate him from the, the game early. As you're going to see all through the, the few videos here, this is one of three right here we're going to show you and the, the show i'm showcasing some of the firepower they can provide even angling doesn't really do much as you can see we're still taking chip damage off of him and which is still damage i mean i i don't ever uh take it for granted that a little bit like 600 damage 700 damage here and there actually does pay off in the long run uh and it doesn't matter how many heals you have whatever it does affect you uh, mentally and physically in the in the game uh, because eventually you're going to be worn down and you can see we're just wearing this guy down at long range and there's nothing much he can do about it he's going to smoke up or get smoked uh, by the shimikaze out there and now he's kind of like done he's kind of held his advance right we held him off he didn't get to flank our, our alone moscow there like we talked about and actually he's pushing my moscow is pushing with another cruiser you just can't see it the conde as well and you can see we're holding that flank easily now it gives our team the ability to flank as well as uh get a nice broadside shot on the san martin because the san martin is probably going to expose himself trying to chase us down so again we know where the shimikaze is right there now that he's been radared and the san martin so we're going to go ahead and use this is the strong suit the ability of the druid to hunt destroyers down and to take advantage of broadside cruisers like this right here this is a beautiful sight ladies and gentlemen if you haven't ever seen this site right here, take a look at it, take a, a freeze frame image of it. The see the broad side of a light cruiser is just, I don't know, it's just heaven right there, right? So it's pretty awesome, World of Warships. When you see this, you just put the line right at the superstructure horizon line, and you just let rip, let loose, and just see, look at the damage just melt right off. Now, we do change a priority right here because we do eliminate anytime we can kill the destroyer. As a good destroyer player, your job is to eliminate the other destroyers, and the druid excels and the ability to eliminate other destroyers very, very quickly. We lose sight of them, so we're going to go back to our second priority, which is St. Martin. And we're going to just pummel shells right into his broadside. Look at that. 1,300 damage, 1,000 damage right off the side, just chipping it away. It doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're doing this every second and a half, it is literally punishing, and there's nothing he can do about it. The damage, the recovery on it is devastating. These AP shells have improved ricochet angles, which means you got to angle at least 70 to 75 degrees from greater just to... Uh, 
reduce the effectiveness. I didn't say eliminate, you'll reduce because the Druid, as you can see, it doesn't matter. You'll plunge the shells into the superstructure and just still keep on taking damage, you can see right there. Look, he, the, the Shimakai is angling, but it, it doesn't do much because we're still taking damage off of him of some kind, just like HE shells would, but these are AP shells, and they are just wrecking shop, and there's nothing the Shimakaze, you know, he's angling to me rather than my enemy or my buddies, and look at this. The San Martin will expose himself right here, a beautiful side shot right there, and then he makes a mistake and gets broadsided by our friendlies. That is what the power of the Druid can really do to a flank and just destroy it. Now, we go in and cap Charlie. We're going to go and cap Alpha. We are down points, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, We are down, and we are also in a bad situation where our ships are spread out. They have a concentrated force at Bravo in our spawn, and we're going to see if we can kind of even the playing field by taking this Marceau out. Look, Marceau is trying to angle. He's got to deal with the Moskva. He's got to deal with us. And he just decides to actually angle to us because we are more of a threat to him. And that's another good thing you want to do as a good destroyer player. Be the bigger threat to the enemy team as a little teeny little destroyer. So they're making mistakes. They're they're exposing broadsides. They're running away. They're not capping. They're look, the Marceau is abandoning the cap, knowing that the druid is on his tail and is able to eliminate him off the map. So he is gonna go ahead and run away. And we are going to go ahead and push the cap ourselves. Uh, literally, the Moskva is there to support, but we are going to look. Here we go. We're going to take on a Nova Brisk, a Super Petra right here, right? We are literally going to just look at the the, the bow of his ship because that's the, the the most weak, the weakest part of any kind of ship in the World of Warships is the bow. The Druid excels at shooting bows. It's really awesome. Now we're going to look at nice, juicy broadsides. I was trying to get Citadels over here. Unfortunately, the armor of this Super Petro Nova Brisk is too, too powerful. We lose our Moskva now. It's just us solo against three guys overhead, Bravo, especially two radar cruisers. So we're going to just keep working our way, just trying to saturate as much of the armor. We're taking 700 to 1,000 damage off every second. We're going to keep trying to aim. Uh, RNG's not helping. A lot of the shells are plunging in the water, but we're taking out the bow. And we're going to, now these angling, these shells don't do as much damage angled, so we're going to go a little bit more into a superstructure. We're going to take a nice 2,300 damages right there, and boom, splash one. He goes down. We hold our ground. Uh, Marceau is too far away to do any kind of effectiveness. We back up, and we're going to see if we can try to cap and maybe stop the advance of their points. We're almost down here, 300 points, and they're at 938. They have one cap left. They may win. They definitely are going to win this based on time. We have eight minutes left in the game. If I let the cap un unabated, it's going to tick up, and they will win the game once they reach a thousand points. Because they tick up, as you can see at the top screen there, three three points every. I think this is what four or five seconds. So we are literally going to go go in. We're having a discussion right now. We're going to go in. Our team is going to push into Bravo Cap. I'm going to go in and hold and wait until the Conde arrives. I literally am going to wait till the cavalry arrives, so I'm going to hold off this advance as much as I can. I'm currently hydroed by the Petro, so I know that he is knows where I'm at, and he is in a position to actually just pun punish me right. He has the option just really just going in and ramming me and win the game. So let's take a look at how she, actually how this plays out. We're going to hold our ground, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at actually how the Druid can hold off an advance on a Petro right here. All right, so he is now realizing what the situation is going. We've got the Conde in the reverse. I'm sorry, not in reverse, but in the in the rear, uh, approaching Bravo from the northwest. We are now getting ready to gun battle this thing out. We've got our heel ready to go, and we are aiming right at his bow. Look at that, 2,100 damage off the bow, 1,200. Just keep pummeling it. Okay, it's full, kind of saturated now, which means it won't do as much damage as we did before. We're going to just keep backing up in reverse. We've got our heel going off. We're going to now aim at the superstructure. A lot of people forget the superstructure allows you to still take damage. We lose our front turret, gun turret. That's a, another con of the druid. If you lose your gun turret, that's 50% damage lost right there. Now we're just going to keep shooting. Look at the reload rate on this thing. We are literally just pummeling shell after shell into his thing. His guns really are not able to just hit us this close in. And boom, the Conde comes in. Calvary saves the day, and now we're going to go ahead and slow our roll and stop Pop Smoke. I save that smoke for this reason, because now the Marceau has no shot on us, and he has to just blind fire and hope for the best. He can still see his Petro. He gets a lucky shot on us. Thank goodness it didn't start a fire right there. Our damage con is not ready, and I hope this fire is put out. Do we actually survive this? And we do actually win the game, and that is how the Druid survives the two kind of Super Petro and Petro push. Pretty incredible, powerful ship. All right, we're in the map repost now in the Druid, and the strategy here is fairly simple. It's more of a clockwise pattern where the entire kind of fleet 
is uh, just proceeding all the way around uh, from the, the south side. If you're starting on the south side, you're in a clockwise pattern this way. And if the northern team, the red team, will be clockwise that way. So it's a very simple strategy. The idea is to have the destroyer go way out in the flanks, make sure nobody flanks us, all while being able to pursue the enemy ships in retreat. The other destroyer and uh, one other, maybe a two cruisers, will go in and contest A because we know... Most of the time, the enemy team in the north will go to Alpha, and then we'll have the battleship and cruiser proceed uh, to straight into Bravo, while the other last cruiser will support and push through Charlie to support the DD out here. A very, very simplistic strategy. This allows us to, as you're going to see the game uh, uh, actually unfold, uh, you're going to see the enemy team is going to continue push, pushing through Alpha as they do a heavy push this way, and it's going to wrap around us in our spawn. This allows our team to uh, really just kind of fall back. We'll push backward this way to and fall back to Bravo Charlie and reverse and uh, kind of stall them at Alpha while our enemy flank or our, our team is pushing the enemy flank from Charlie to sweep in and just mop up everybody from Bravo. So that's kind of how this strategy plays out. Let's take a look at the video and see how it goes. Really good one. All right, we're in the map repost here, and now we are doing the same that we talked about, pushing the flank while the middle group uh, will go through Charlie Bravo, and we now have a uh, kind of angled Mosfa. Again, I don't really believe the way this um, Druid is built that the angles really matter because look what we can do. We can walk the shells on and just kind of lead them right into the superstructure, which is really only 19 millimeter armor, and you're seeing we're getting chip damage. We're getting just nice, simple damage to the point where their cruisers are electing to fire at us, rather than our friendlies and that's and that's exactly what we're trying to do right here we're trying to draw fire so that our team can get into position to allow them to effectively employ weapons to literally just get in those nice juicy broadsides and eliminate ships from the game now look we're now getting we're switching priorities to a broadside cruiser which then now has to angle to us and again he would rather angle to us than our friendly so we are pummeling tons and tons of AP arm armor piercing shells right into the Stalingrad here. He has nothing he can do but go in reverse and angle to us and ta literally taking his guns out of the fight. Moskva, I believe, is still firing at us, so that is... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he is still firing us, which means one less set of guns that are shooting at our buddies. So we're going to keep shooting and pummeling the Stalingrad and see if we can take him out of the game. Does he get removed? Yes, it looks like he has a damage, a perma fire on him, and he goes down. Now we can focus all our full strength on the Moskva now. Again, he is still firing. Notice that he is 12.4 kilometers. I know his radar range is 12. That is a good thing as a destroyer player to know the effective ranges of enemy cruiser radars. So now we're going to go ahead and pop smoke. We're going to go undetected. He will remain detected, and this is just free damage for us because he has no idea where we're at. Not very effective shooting ability in smoke, and this is where the Druid excels. Slim profile in smoke, very, very difficult to hit, especially without radar. And we're going to just gonna lob thousands of cell shells into the superstructure of this guy. I mean, we are pumping shells out literally one every couple seconds here. And it is incredible the amount of firepower you can put into a superstructure of a Moskva. And he has to make one of two decisions, either run away or reverse angled. And it really is taking himself and the guns out of the fight. And he can't do much other than go full reverse. He can't cap. He can't support uh, the rest of his team. He's literally just trying to fight for survival here. At this point, since he's now below half health, we are now going to go ahead and push him hard. And once we go out of smoke, you know, our fearless brawler will kick. Oh, actually, he goes down early, so that's good. So there, right there, is the power of flanking, having a druid on the flanks, which is totally devastating and something you do not want to allow happen. And again, once the, uh, the druid is out in the open with his full gun build, fearless brawler kicks in right at this moment right here. Here it is, fearless brawler. Look at the reload rate we're getting. 1.2 seconds, you're launching literally two sets of shells out from two guns that are pummeling this handover which you would think is a super, super battleship that can handle this kind of damage. But look at the damage. He's started at 60,000 health. And just look, we're not taking much off of him. It's only about 700 damage every couple seconds. But that 700 damage pays off in dividends. I mean, literally, it's a compound interest effect. It's constantly just whittling away, whittling away, whittling away. Constant, s simple damage that is really 
annoying and devastating over time. And it literally is going to punish this uh, Hanover. And I'm surprised he didn't put his secondaries on us. I think he uh, was more focused on shooting the, either the battleship. And again, if you neglect to take on a druid, it will come to haunt you in the long run because now he's, he, I believe he took out our Annapolis for there. Now he's more focused. Now he fires his main guns. Now he's noticing we are a bigger threat to him than the Montana is. So we're going to go ahead and continue helping our Montana out, absorbing fire. His secondaries are now engaged on us. I don't want to um, take on the Hanover super ability. I think, yeah, those lights, those spotlights that are on mean that his super ability of secondary zone, we don't want to play with that. We're going to pop smoke, go undetected, and continue pummeling these shells into his superstructure. Now, I remember where he's at, so I'm kind of, you know, after playing this game for a while, you kind of just lead the shells. You know where you kind of imagine where his ship's at. Keep firing, keep firing, and boom, he goes down. Splash one, he is down for the count. One hand over, ooh, nicey bro uh, cruisers coming into the middle of Bravo here. And we're going to see if we can help our Montana go out and Druid, I'm sorry, not Druid, the Montana is now the primary focus. This is what I like about uh, this situation here. When there is no attention to you, you can have a free day of just shooting uh, a broadside cruiser uh, while your team is helping you absorb damage. We're going to switch targets to the Puerto Rico. He's a lot weaker. See if we can get him out to help our team. One less set of guns to worry about. Knowing your situation awareness and the priority, we're going to see if we can take the Puerto Rico. It should be easy. He's pretty much down the low health right here. And boom, he goes down. Way to go, Salem. And now we're going to take on the Napoli one-on-one -on -one solo. So it looks like he's got a secondary, very devastating secondary from a Napoli. You don't want to play with that. But if you're angled, they kind of it kind of mitigates a lot of that damage. So he is taking shots from the side. We're going to go ahead and continue shooting a superstructure. That, that's the sweet spot of the Napoli right there because... He is heavily armored all over the place. Maybe the bow has a little bit of forgiveness. Let's see if we shoot the bow here. And does the bow give us some kind of damage? It does. So those armor-piercing shells that I talked about, angling really almost does nothing. If you really can get those nice sweet spots right there, and we're taking tons and tons of damage. He is getting fully annoyed right here. And we're going to continue putting those shells right into his superstructure. And they are just lighting him up. Do we get this kill? Do we get it? Come on, 2,000 more damage. And boom, splash two. He goes down. That is our second kill. And nice that the Marceau decided to pop up over here. We're going to go ahead and eliminate him off the map to free up our ability to go cap Alpha and then Bravo. And that's how we'll try to save the game and win the game for our team. 106,000 damage, two kills. Here we go. Full broadside. Marceau does not expect that we're coming from this angle right here. We get the nice broadsides, and his armor just is unable to mitigate and unsaturate that damage. Marceau goes down. Third kill, splash three for us right there. We're going to go ahead and push into Bravo, and we're going to try to find this last Marceau. It would be wise for the Marceau to try to avoid, uh, but unfortunately, he cannot. He's currently radared by our Salem. We cap Alpha. We cap Bravo. We have now taken the lead, or we can just eliminate the Marceau all together right here. So why not go for the kill and uh, put this game to rest? Watch full broadside of the uh, Marceau, and he has more health than we do. And we're going to go. His guns are not in the ready position right there. He is currently taking full broadside damage right there, and boom. He goes down. Splash four. Four kills with the day. Wins the game, and that is the power of the Druid on the flanks. Uh, we'll take a look at the build at the very end of the video. We'll take a look at the next video. Pretty, pretty wild and awesome right here. Take a, take a look at the stats. Four kills, a lot, a lot of damage. 117,000 damage, and let's take the next map. All right, Warriors team, path. this is Warrior's Path with the Druid, and the strategy here is pretty simple. It's not too cosmic. It's just having five ships go to Alpha to contest it because the majority of the people like to contest Alpha, and, of course, two ships go to Charlie to free cap it and kind of just hold and defend. We're not doing m a lot in the Druid initially after the Charlie. We're just holding and defending while the main bulk of our force pushes uh, behind this island, behind this island, and then they're going to hold right here while the, ge the gear or our uh, destroyer will actually push through the cap and go out and spot and kind of just hold alpha and see how they actually go through while the destroyer and another cruiser will come and hold Charlie. As you can see, um, very simplistic idea. What you're going to actually find out uh, through the video is they do do a heavy kind of push to uh, alpha, but we have another bulk of the force swinging around and going through the middle trying to contest alpha and you or Charlie. And you can see the druid with the help of a cruiser can really do a lot of damage and hold off uh, I flank pretty well. So let's take a look at the video. All right, we're on Warrior's Path here. And at this point with the, the team I was playing with, I was just marking for uh, other teams in right now. And uh, we were literally on like a seven-game run streak. I'm telling you, the Druid is literally a uh, multi-factor 
uh, I would say, ship that really can turn the tides of battles. And I'm telling you, I don't know, the, the stat show for himself, winning literally seven or eight battles in a row. Now, granted, I'm not in the Typhoon Storm League. Uh, I have tried playing that, and I'll tell you, man, it is a struggle. Uh, play, teams play way different in Typhoon in Storm, but I kind of enjoy just playing kind of in the in the average the Squall kind of Gale Leagues. It's just simplistic uh, fun. You just run in there, do a lot of damage, and uh, but the Typhoon uh, and uh, Storm Leagues, man, they really do play standoffish. More kind of like randoms, honestly. Uh, it's not really that fun to me, honestly. I like playing in uh, this kind of uh, arena right here. Just, I'm just an average player. I'm just having fun. But anyways, Des Moines making mistakes of trying to show himself. He's got showing full broadside to a Montana. He's also showing broadside to a Petro. He took a major, a major Citadel right there off the front, and we are also taking damage off him from the side. Angling doesn't do anything, and Montana eliminates him. That's our first ship. We hold off at Charlie right there, and it's proving to be very effective. Um, I'm telling you, the Druid on flanks is very, very devastating and a very big threat to deal with. You do not want to let a Druid uh, push a flank for you. So now that we're holding Charlie, we're waiting for our team. We have capped Alpha now. They're in position to just sit and hold. And we are now having Mosva pop up on radar. We see that he is exposing himself, going kind of almost full broadside here, which is what the Druid really likes. I like seeing this image right here. We're going to see Arc the Shells kind of a very good ballistics for a Druid. Shooting at 12 kilometers that you can kind of easily aim and lead these shells enough where these are getting nice plunging fires right into the superstructure that'll give you that 900 to 900 damage per second kind of uh, effect. And uh, that's very, very uh, powerful and effective for the Druid player, especially at these standoff ranges. I don't like anything less than about uh, 12 or 11 because, one, you get radar, and two, uh, cruiser players are very, very good at shooting at those ranges. I've noticed cruiser players struggle shooting out past 12 kilometers, and I wonder if that's just the way RNG is or the mechanics. And it makes it easier for cru or destroyer players to play, and that's why I noticed the majority of the destroyer guns don't go past 12 kilometers unless you're kind of in these, you do gun build, full gun boat builds or in these bigger, heavier destroyers like maybe like an Elbing or Ragnar. Uh, kind of those kind of uh, destroyers really reach out and touch it from 15 to 16. I've built the Druid that you can see max range of 14 and a half. So these are more comfortable ranges for me. You can see he's less than 12 now, which is not where I want to be at. And his shells are a little bit more concentrated and they hit you spot on. I'm telling you, it's really difficult to dodge shells at less than 12 kilometers in a destroyer. So it's better just to keep running away, have the guy push in. I mean, you notice I'm drawing him into the cap. He's missing some of the shots there. That's good. That's one less set of shots he's shooting at my Montana, my friendlies. And I'm drawing as much fire as I can, trying to survive as long as I can. Uh, this is not a full health uh, Druid build. You notice I only get it to 25,300, but you can build it up to 28,000. I think I would rather have the extra set of heals and smokes for uh, this kind of uh, mentality of play. And we're kind of trying it out, see how it works. So far, it's working great. We are now drawing this Moskva into the cap. He's now capping, but we're going to go ahead and try to pop smoke, go undetected, and reset him. And it looks like the Montana gets a nice free shot into him right there. We're going to now run outside. I know the Moskva just used his radar, therefore he can't spot me right now. So I'm going to try to see if I can get to his right flank right here. See, this is all about positioning. So we're coordinating with the Montana. Montana will continue to uh, draw fire and shoot. See if I can get this, Mon this Moskva to turn right a little bit to the... Uh, no, there he goes. He's turning right here. This gives me a lot better shot. Yep, he's going a little bit more too committed to the right now. He's more focused on the Montana. He's afraid of him. This is where we take our advantage. He exposed himself, which is his mistake right there. Exposing yourself to a broadside druid is not fun. Uh, you're just going to see as a cruiser player, you just can't do anything about it. it we're just taking way too much more uh, damage off of him, and he is literally just going to melt. And, uh, yeah, nothing more you can do about that. Splash one. He goes down. So Moscow is taken down, but notice this. Notice the exclamation point in the center of my screen. I am still taking damage, or still being spotted, that is from something, which means I know that the gearing is still in the area, which means that he's in probably in the Charlie Cop. We're going to go ahead and push him because we know we can bully destroyers as a Druid player. He can't really do much to us other than torpedoes, and his guns are pretty much, I would say, almost non-existent and ineffective uh, to, uh, to our heavy armor, our angling, uh, and not heavy armor, but more just the angling makes the armor so strong because when you're angled, it's difficult to hit this thing in the Druid, and you got two forward-facing guns that shoot at a sec every second uh, shell, so pretty pretty disgusting so i know he's right in front of us all right here he goes full health and just watch his health melt just take it all in just enjoy it
Yeah, there, there's literally nothing. Now he's trying to angle. Look, the shells are just still going. I mean, you have to literally angle full 180 degrees uh, away from your 90, uh, 180 offset. And, and literally, the shells keep going. And look at the reload rate on that thing. And boom, he goes down. Nothing he could have done right there, unfortunately. But uh, good effort, valiant effort on the gearing. But that's just the way the Druid over bully, or, uh, overpowers and bullies uh, other destroyers. We end the game with uh, shooting at the Petra over here, long range. And man, he is just... Gonna absorb the full brunt of the force. I don't care if you're a Petro or whatever it, the, the Petro just cannot stop. And boom, we got that last scale splash three. And that is the name of the game. That is the Druid, ladies and gentlemen. Literally going on a seven to eight game winning streak with the Druid. Pretty awesome. Try it out. Take a look at it if you haven't gotten it. The build will be at the end of the screen. I hope you enjoy the video. Always like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support at 2000 subs. Doing a free premium DD giveaway. As always, you guys stay safe and we'll talk to you guys soon. Stay high when you see me out there. Cheers.